No one say amen. Welcome to the preservation service for the month of March. It is our month of the blessing or prosperity in greater glory. So, we are going to see the supplies of God like never before in this month. And the subject tonight is preserved by the blessing. Preserved by the blessing. We have the objective of understanding the preservation power of the blessing of God and also to understand how the blessing preserves. The preservation power power of the blessing and how the blessing preserves. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8 Thus saith the Lord as the new wine is found in the cluster and one saith Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servants' sakes, that I may not destroy them all. Destroy it not. There's more than unusual level of noise tonight and running around tonight, ushers. Just like there is an association that they have decided to form tonight. Maybe they are saying for a long time they have holding their peace. Now they have to make their voices known. On Sunday we established that the blessing of God is far beyond material supplies. We saw about five things that come along with the blessing. You have it on the screen. and let the people know that wealth from the blessing of God is sorrow free. It is peaceful. We saw that on Sunday. We saw also that wealth from the blessing of God attracts the protection of God. We saw that on Sunday. That wealth from the blessing of God also attracts divine health from God. He won't give you money and not give you the health to enjoy it. Then we saw that wealth from the blessing of God comes along with generational greatness. You, it can't make you wealthy and, you, and your children are useless. And then we saw that wealth from the blessing of God comes with transgenerational transfer. It is not finishable wealth in a generation. We saw all that on Sunday. And the second point is what we are really anchoring on tonight. That the blessing of God is the combination of divine protection with divine provision. Is the combination of divine provision with divine protection. It is possible to have provision without protection. 
that the blessing of God is the combination of supernatural prosperity with supernatural security. And it is possible to have prosperity without security. It's a combination. And we have examples in scripture. We'll look at them very quickly. First of all, Noah. The blessing of God guaranteed the preservation of Noah and his family. Genesis chapter 9 verse 1 to 2. The preservation of Noah and his family. And God blessed Noah and his sons. And said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you, and the dread of you, shall be upon every beast of the earth. Because of this blessing I have put on you, the fear of you, the dread of you, shall be upon every beast, upon every fowl of the air, and upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Noah, what I am saying to you is, by my blessing on you and on your children, you are not pursuable. You are literally unharmable. You are literally untouchable by the dangers of the earth. That was Noah. Example number two was Abraham. The blessing of God gave the blessing of God on Abraham. Both preserved him and gave him victory in battle. It preserved him and gave him victory in battle. You remember how God came to Abimelech in Genesis chapter 20 and in verse 3 because of Abraham and told him you are a dead man because you are trying to temper with my friend's wife. And then in Genesis chapter 14 from verse 14 to verse 16, you saw how Abraham, one man, decided to confront the army of four nations. And he won the battle and rescued the captives. One man. Again I said, the blessing of God on Abraham, the blessing both preserved and gave Abraham victory in battle. Example number three, Isaac. The blessing made Isaac irresistible, unstoppable, and mightier than the enemy. The blessing on the life of Isaac, it made Isaac irresistible unstoppable and mightier than the enemy. There are people seated here hearing the sound of my voice and all our locations around the world and watching via the satellite, the internet. I prophesy Blessing is a force. When 
we say God bless you, it doesn't mean I wish you well. It means you are carrying a force that makes you irresistible. The, be the blessing is not a wish, it's a force. The blessing is not a greeting, it's an empowerment. You know, we can have a way of making things look little. Bless you, bless you, bless you. That was Isaac. Example number four, Jacob. The blessing preserved Jacob from destruction while he served labor. The beast of the field could not touch him. Laban could not harm him. And you know all the people I'm mentioning are candidates of the blessing. In Genesis chapter 31 verse 40 all the way to verse 42. Jacob was giving the account of his service in the house of Laban. He said, thus I was. In the day the drought consumed me. And the frost by night. And my sleep departed from mine eyes. Thus I have been 20 years in thy house. He was talking to Laban. I served you 14 years for your two daughters. And 6 years for your cattle. And you changed my wages 10 times. Except the God of my father. The God of Abraham. And the fear of Isaac had been with me. You would have sent me away empty. But God saw my affliction and the, and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night. That is the power of the blessing. He saved, he delivered, preserved Jacob from destruction. Someone here, every attempt of the enemy to target you for destruction is hereby frustrated. Finally, number five example, Job. In Job chapter one now, the blessing was behind the preservation of Job and his family before fear arrived. Before fear arrived. In Job chapter one, verse nine to 10, Satan gave us a revelation. Satan gave us a revelation. Because there are things that the devil do or the, the things he does that you can see some light from. Satan was speaking and we saw something. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear you for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him? And about his house and about all that he has on every side? You have blessed him and the work of his hands. And his substance is increased in the land. So Job had a preservation by the blessing until he gave room to fear. In Job chapter 3 and in verse 25 and then the things he feared came upon him. Listen brothers and sisters. If the blessing of God is upon your life you are not a wasteable material. You are not a finishable commodity. And everyone planning to waste you, they shall waste themselves. The blessing is, is, is forceful. He says, whosoever blesses you, I will bless. And anyone who causes you whom I have blessed, I will cause. If they assist you, I assist them. If they re resist you, I reduce them. Don't joke with a man that carries the blessing. And the good thing is that those who are connected to the blessed are blessed. 
He said, in you shall the families of the earth be blessed. Because connection determines collection. Something is coming up on somebody tonight. Quickly. How does the blessing preserve the blessed? Number one. The blessing establishes the fear and dread of the Lord upon the life of the blessed. The blessing It just places the fear and the dread of the Lord upon the life of a man that is blessed. In Genesis 9, 1 to 2, we saw it. God blessed Noah and his sons and then in verse 2 and the fear of you and the head of you shall be upon every beast of the field that is when they see you afar they fear they will experience panic attacks at your thought the mentioning of you can give them stroke In Genesis chapter 35 and in verse 5, the Bible said, And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. To understand what I mean, you know the facial appearance of the lion can cause both urinary and fecal incontinence to happen to the goat. In case you don't know what I mean, that when the, the, that is the goat sighting the face of a lion, just looking at the face, urinates without control. Uh, we is we is we and pooing, we poo, we poo. there is something in that look there is something in that appearance that sparks terror it sparks terror I told you in my in our university days young man young man I have never seen that young man laughed until after he had given his life to Christ. He is black like smoke. Permanently on Indian hemp. As he stood. He didn't laugh for nothing. But one day. I caught him. Arrested him. Sat him down. Led him to Christ by force. He became born again. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Later on he told me. He said. Anytime you are coming, I fear, I tremble. He said, you terrorize me. I look at him, I say, what? What are you talking about? I say, oh, that he doesn't want me. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't like to encounter me. I'm coming, he's coming. He's shaking. Say, you? He didn't smile for any reason. He barbs his head, skin permanent. So I said, what happened? He said, anytime I see you, it appears as if you are coming to catch me and kill me. That's his word. Catch me and destroy me. 
And the devil inside him, I'm sure was what was aware of what was going on. He said, I'll place the terror of you. That is, you step into your village. The witches and the wizards see you coming, they tremble. The occult see you coming, they shake. You don't know who you are. You don't know what you carry. That is why you are afraid of everything and everybody. Take your seat. When I was a small boy in a Methodist church, I saw a preacher who, who told us a story. I don't know why he put that story in that message, but I can never forget it. He said, one day, goat ran into lion in the forest path. And the goat was vibrating. He has already died and woke up, died, woke up, died. <laughs> While he was, lion say, Help, wake up, wake up. Just calm down, calm down. No challenge, calm down, calm down, calm down. He said, tell me three important things why you should still remain alive. The goat say, number one, you are not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> because if you are hungry, what is the aim of this question? <laughs> Tell me three, but that is. He said, Number two, I didn't know this was your road. <laughs> if I know, can I pass even in the dream? <laughs> he said, Yes, you got two, two right. He said, Number three, if I live here now and I tell people I met Lion, they say it's a lie. <laughs> can you meet Lion and return back alive? Then the Lion say, Three over three, you pass. Now run without looking back. <laughs> that is how when the enemy jams you next time, they shall tremble, they shall shake, they shall vibrate, they shall not be able to stand your look. I prophesy to somebody here. My God and your God is about to place something on you. It's about to place something on your life that is going to terrorize the powers of hell. Shout the loudest. Amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord and let me see how far we can push. The blessing of the Lord. Eat establishes the fear and the dread of the Lord upon the life of the blessed. That is something comes upon you and it's upon you that provokes fear in the camp of the enemy. Number two, the blessing establishes a supernatural shield of defense around the life of a supernatural shield or a supernatural hedge of defense around the life of the blessed. We saw it in Job chapter 1 verse 10. Have you not made a hedge around him? Talking about an impenetrable wall of defense. A missile shield. A ballistic missile shield. Where the enemy fires his arrows of destruction. And they arrive to bounce back to sender. You are not one of those kind of people where they say you are, you are now rich. Let's see how you will enjoy the money. That devil is a bastard. You are not, we are not of that generation of people. Where they are saying, okay, I hear you are working in NNPC. Or you have um, a, 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 an oil, oil field. Or you have this and you have that. Let's see how you live and enjoy it. We are not in that generation. He said, God blesses us and places a shield, a wall around us. So that when their arrows come one way, it returns back a thousand times. Somebody shout, power! Power! 
there is a shield there is a shield there is a shield the blessing establishes a supernatural shield of defense number three the blessing establishes the rebuke of the lord against the enemy on the life of the blessed the blessing establishes the rebuke of the Lord against the enemy on the life of the blessed. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and he say, destroy it not. For a blessing is in it. When they move from one place to another, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Hello. Oh, I'd like you to understand something. God is not going to say when the devil arrives to confront you, he was not going to speak afresh. Don't touch him. His voice has been programmed. There is something they call in law perpetual injunction. That is on a continual basis there is a decree that is placed on this man's life. On this issue is a no-go area. How many of you have entered the lift before that speaks the program voice in it? This lift is going down. I'm sure you heard it before. I remember one day we entered the lift somewhere in South Africa and some of our guys were in the lift with us. Do you remember what the lift said? It said this lift is carrying too many people. Because some loaded guys were inside. The, this lift is, is it overload, overloaded? So those who were guilty looked at each other <laughs> and stepped out. Then the lift was okay. <laughs> and the lift carried us. Because there are some people you don't count once. You can't say one, two, three. There are people you point at them three times. One, two, three, four, five. There are people that are two or three in one. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, if the, if the time comes when they, they begin to weigh people before they enter taxi or enter air, air, airplane you have to pay according to your weight the way you pay according, <laughs> according according to your load then people might adjust a bit but the voice there is a voice of God hanging on your life do you understand what I'm talking about there is a statement on your life as you move, there is a voice. Destroy him not, for a blessing is in him. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. You are in motion and, and the devils are hearing a voice. The demons are hearing a voice. The witches are hearing a voice. The wizards are hearing a voice. Uh, your life produces an utterance. Somebody shout power. power. 
You don't understand what I'm talking about. There is a rebuke of the Lord programmed against the devil on your life. It's programmed. It's programmed against the devil on your life. Touch him not. Touch her not. A blessing is on him. A blessing is on her. You want to die? Go ahead. You want to die? Try it. I see someone here today. Very soon people will come to tell you that they encountered something when they tried you. When they thought about you. When they tried you. Shout the loudest. Amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord establishes the rebuke of the Lord against the enemy on the life of the blessed. Number four, the blessing positions positions rescue angels rescue angels around the life of the blessed rescue or deliverance angels around the life of the blessed there are angels positioned to rescue in case there is a need when jacob was blessing ephraim and manasseh the sons of joseph he gave us that secret in genesis chapter 48 verse 15 to 16. he said and he blessed joseph and said god before whom my fathers abraham and isaac did walk the god which fed me all my life long unto this day the angel which redeemed or rescued me from all evil that angel blessed this lad that rescued me from all evil so you are not permitted as a blessed person to be left to yourself when Jacob was going to face Esau he did so in the company of angels in Genesis chapter 32 verse 1 when he was returning back home and they say Esau was coming and Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him when you see a madman he is not alone he is he is plenty no they ask one in the Bible say what is your name he say legion and legion is not a name, it's a number. It's a battalion. <laughs> what is your name? Battalion. What is your name? Division. <laughs> that is, we plenty. You, see, you can't tell me what is your name because I am not one. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? In this... When you see a drunkard, he, he's not alone too. He's moving, but he has demons of it and all. Burukutu demons. He's together with many, many. Pitoch highly pitocious. With sapele water. He's just moving like that. You say, leave the road. You say, what, who do you think you are talking to? <laughs> you say, see if I could come in. You say, does the driver not have eyes? <laughs> All right. He is not alone. But this is where I'm going. When a genuine child of God is in motion, he is not alone too. somebody by yourself say I am not alone I plenty stand up on your feet walk to seven people tell them I am not alone what about you
ay, 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 Listen, I read the book of Kenneth Hagin and he told a story about a criminal that was in a hideout, in a dark place where people were passing and he attacked men, he attacked men, attacked women. So he was arrested and they called men and women that he had attacked to come and identify if he was the one. All of them went and identified him. But there was a lady that passed that wasn't I, I, attacked. But the lady saw him. So she too went. A Christian born again, Holy Ghost filled, anointed. And they went, say yes. That is the man. He's, he's, he's real. I met him. Say, but he didn't touch me. And the man said, but you are not alone. She said, he said, I saw two giants. One on your left, one on your right as you passed. You were not the only one that passed. The lady passed alone, but because that man was a demonic man, God caused him to solve goodness and mercy angels. Ay, 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 surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, two of them, all the days of my life as I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Somebody shout power. Look at your neighbor say, I am not alone. And you are not alone. Take your seat. That is at times the devil and his agents are more aware of our protection than us. Job was afraid for his life. Yet Satan told God, have you not placed a hedge around him? And Job was not aware. This girl said, I saw the man, but he didn't touch me. And the man said, but you were not alone. Two people accompanied you, giants. From this moment, God will cause some of us to see that we are not alone. Shout the loudest, amen. So the blessing of the Lord, positions, rescue or deliverance angels around the life of the blessed. And finally, the blessing attracts the direct confrontation of the Lord. Towards the offenders of the blessed. It attracts the direct confrontation of the law towards the offenders of the blessed. That is, apart from the fact that the blessing will establish the terror of the Lord around you and establish. The supernatural shield of defense around you and establish the rebuke of the Lord and then attracts position rescue angels. The blessing will also attract the direct fight of God. That is where necessary you can step down in person. That was what happened. In Genesis chapter 20 verse 3. When God appeared to Abimelech in person. And said you are a dead man. And God came to Abimelech in a dream by the night. And said to him. Behold you are but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken. Is a man's wife. The same way God appeared. To Laban, Genesis 31 verse 24, he appeared in person and God came to Laban, the Syrian, in a dream by night and said unto him, take heed that you speak not to Jacob either good or bad. 
Be careful how you talk to him. Be careful how you talk to him. And that is, that is God came and said, I am El Shaddai. Omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, omni everything. Laban, have you heard of me before? I'm the one. Be careful with Jacob. Okay? I'll see you later. Abraham, you are not about to die. You died. Waiting to be buried. Oh, sorry, Abimelech. For you touched Abraham's wife. There are people tonight, because of you, they will encounter the fearful Jehovah encounter. They will have an encounter with your maker. That will cause them to be careful. Somebody say amen. Did anybody hear anything tonight? Take your seat. How do you experience the preservation of the blessing? Experiencing the preservation power of the blessing. Number one, be firmly rooted in the covenant of the blessing. Anything it takes to experience the blessing of God, do it. For example, be an addicted covenant practitioner. Addicted. I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. For as long as you are a blessing to the kingdom, a blessing to God, a blessing to man, you have no end to being blessed. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. Anybody who is here tonight who negotiates instructions, who is here tonight? Who gives when he feels it is convenient? Anybody who is here tonight? Who thinks that God is looking for his money and so is so, just so stingy and frugal with God? I'm not talking to you. just it is gone for some of us we are sentenced we are donated forever to God so I want you to be firmly rooted in the covenant of the blessing anything you know obeying God Connecting his voice. You shall serve the Lord and he shall bless. 
Bring your tithes and I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. He that has clean hands, he shall receive the blessing of the Lord. There are several things we have outlined that connects people to the blessing of God. Give and it shall be given to you good measure. I shall bless you and you shall be a blessing. And so on and so forth. And as you plug in yourself into the covenant of the blessing, you don't need to beg to be protected extra. It is a package. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor say it. It's a package. Say it louder. Say it's a package. Say it louder. Say it is a package. When you pay airfare from here to New York or from here to, to London, England, you don't need to beg for the food in the aircraft. It is inside the package. When my wife agreed to marry me, She didn't need to beg for food or beg for clothes or beg for everything. It is inside the package. Do you see? She agreed. She changed her name, her father's name. That's a sacrifice. Are you following what I'm saying? And adopted my own surname. Plus all other sacrifices. That is how this matter is. When you plug into this blessing covenant, there are things you don't beg for anymore. The defense, the preservation is inside the package. And I see somebody here experiencing that preservation package in the name of Jesus. Number two, be conscious. Well, let, me, let me say it like this. Live in the consciousness of the benefits of the blessing covenant exist in the consciousness of the benefits of the blessing covenant be fully aware and conscious of what is working for you it, what you know determines what you show Live in that consciousness. Job had a, a hedge around him. He was not aware. He became a victim. Jacob had the ministry of angels around him. He was aware. And no devil could, could, could waste him. You, you read it already in Genesis chapter 48 verse 16. The angel that delivered me from all evil. He was aware that there was an angel around him. Or angels around him. That were not. That were on duty to secure his life. And secure his destiny. You remember when. The king of. Was it the, the king of Syria. Sent to come and arrest Elisha. His servant was shaken. Elisha said, Papa, open his eyes. Let him see what I am seeing. Alas, master, for we are surrounded. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 6, 17, 18, thereabout. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray you, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about. What is working against you is not as important as what is working for you. Elisha said, they that be for us are more than they that be for them. What is working for you, what is working against you, is not as important as what is working for you. The problem is not what is working against you. The problem is your ignorance of what is working for you. That's where the problem is. You are not aware of what is working for you. So you shake for every witch. You shake for every threat. Shake for everything. Everything shakes you. 
Be aware. Be conscious. Because the devil is aware of what you are aware of. What I say. He can smell both fear and ignorance from a distance. Didn't you hear what the children of Israel said? In Numbers chapter 13, I think it was in verse 33. He said, And there we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight. As grasshoppers. That is not a problem now. And so we were in their sight. As we saw ourselves, so they saw us. So we were in their sight. The way you see yourself affects the way the devil sees you. So here you are moving. The fear of the Lord, the terror of the Lord is around me. Angels of rescue are positioned around me. There is a hedge of defense. I am not wasteable. No missile of the enemy can hit me anyhow. There are things that are not prayer requests at all. And if need be, my God will step into the battle himself. You are fully aware of such. And as you move, the devil is aware that you are aware. Very important. Did you hear what the Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 1 said? Who is as a wise man? That is who has revelation and insight. Who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? Who is the man that has insight and light? Has depth of knowledge. A man's insight. A man's revelation. A man's wisdom. A man's understanding make it his face to shine, and the boldness of his face is changed. So there are things you know that when it appears on your face, light is reflective that makes the devil see your face and see it and see the force and the boldness and the authority and the audacity with which you move. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. By the things we know from this book, there is no mortal man with breath in his nose that we fear under heaven. Not one. Not one. We apply caution at times for some considerations. There is nothing we can preach about and there is nothing we can preach against including ourselves if need be. So little nothing. By virtue of light inside. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor say are you aware? It, it appears as if you are not fully aware. If you are aware why are you shaking like that? Somebody say it loud, amen. Finally, first be firmly rooted. Two, live in the consciousness of the benefits of the blessing covenant. And thirdly, completely avoid existence in fear. Completely. Avoid existence in fear. Fear is not only an anti-covenant operation, it's an anti-blessing operation. Completely. I told you of the, of the hedge that was around the life of Job in Job chapter 1 verse 10. Yet he was attacked. Why? The things I greatly feared. Job chapter 3 verse 25. The man had a hedge around him. He was not aware. He lived in fear until that fear attracted disaster. Despite the blessing on his life. Mm. 
The fear of witches is the beginning of wretchedness. The fear of wizards is the beginning of wastage. The fear of idol is the beginning of dullness. What you fear determines how you fare. Hello? Kill fear. Kill fear with light from scripture. Kill fear with the decrees of your own mouth. Kill fear with motion despite fear. Someone say amen. You say, but I dreamt that the dream was so clear. It cannot be clearer than scripture. Yes, sir. Somebody say loud amen. amen. Are you about to step into that blessing? Is there somebody blessed tonight? Is there somebody seeing the devil packing his load back to hell? Is there somebody experiencing liberty, experiencing deliverance, experiencing liberation? Stand up on your feet with a clap, a shout, a leap of joy. Hallelujah. Look at somebody by your side said, I am blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Five times. I am blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Five times. I am blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Again. I am blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Again. I am blessed, I'm blessed, I am blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Now seven times. I am blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Another one. I am, I am blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, and blessed. And you are preserved. I'm 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 preserved. The devil showed you a coffin in the dream and said that he is inside. Not yourself. <laughs> he, he, he put your he put he, he asked one of his uh, demon artists to, 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 to do a mask that looked like you and put the mask on his face and put himself in the coffin and said you are the one. Tell the devil I am too aware. I'm too aware that I can't be standing here and be seeing coffin. Somebody is lying inside and you say I'm the one. See me here. See you there. <laughs> hey! That your father died before time is immaterial. That your brothers, your sisters died before time is immaterial. You see, the preservation service was not another program organized. It was a strategically, divinely instructed program for the rescue of lives and destinies. And we've seen the message of God. For the rescue of lives and destinies from premature wastage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care how old you are. Moses was 120 years when he died. His natural strength was not reduced. How old are you now? Subtracted from 120. <laughs> and, and find out what you want to do with the balance. balance you can still have degree if you didn't have a degree and you want to have a degree <laughs> is God speaking to somebody at all some of you your balance is plenty <laughs> live 
lift up your hands everywhere you are and give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords the praise. The I am that I am, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Father, we love you. Father, we praise you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Jehovah Mekadesh. Jehovah Karen Yesha. Jehovah Olamore. We love you. We worship you. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. And thank you, Master. And thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name, lift your two hands up. Mm. So all our elderly people, anyone 70, 80, people say, oh, be concluding your life. Tell them you still have some plans. Now you can do many, many things with it. Many, many, many things with it. Lift up your two hands everywhere you are and say after me, say, Father, I come before you today. I receive the grace in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace to walk in the covenant. To be firmly rooted in the covenant of the blessing. In the name of Jesus, I receive the grace to be fully conscious, to be fully aware of the benefits of the blessing covenant at all times. In the name of Jesus, I refuse and I resist the spell of fear, the spirit of fear. Father, I receive the preservation power of the blessing. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray, pray, pray.